Hello, I'm Robert Hindelider, Environmental Chairman of PWNA, Fire Warriors of North America, and United Association of Mobile Contract Cleaners, UAMCC. The two organizations have come together to create a workshop for EPA's model ordinance up on their website. This can be used by the different municipalities to create their uh, BMPs, their regulations, and you can follow them and you're welcome to change these slides as you, as you see and use this as part of your uh, training in your local area when you have a workshop to implement these environmental regulations for the cosmetic uh, contract cleaners in your area. Basically, uh, if you're doing a seminar, you want to have them uh, put their cell phones and pagers on silent or vibrate. Uh, this is my this is my ordinance for regulatory agents to use to hold public comment periods, training seminars for contractors and regulators, and cosmetic cleaning ordinances. You are free to pick and choose and modify slides as you wish. All that PWNA and UAMCC assets credit be given to PWNA and UAMC for using this guide, and that you forward your final BMPs and ordinances to both organizations. Huh. Again, that's our address for both associations and everything so that you can know how to contact everybody. And the uh, Environmental Committee for PWNA and the Board of Directors for UAMCC. The PWNA committee members consist of Charlie Arnold, Eric Clark, Paul Horsley, and Mike Hilborn. And the directors of uh, UAMCC is Mike Teresar, David Vickers, John Orr, Russ Spence. Background. After completing a national survey of cosmetic cleaning regulations, the EPA chose the ordinance developed in cooperation with the City of Fort Worth as a model ordinance for other municipalities. Why did they do this? Some of the reasons were the ordinance is reasonable, rational, and logical. Uh, such an ordinance is good for the City of Fort Worth, the contract cleaners, and environments. The ordinance has been based on voluntary compliance since January the 2nd of 1996 at almost no cost to the city. The ordinance was adopted as a result of a public com comment period. It was held on July the 17th, 1995. We had about 100 contract cleaners and 40 regulators show up that represented uh, municipal, county, regional, state, and federal EPA regulators. Uh, this conference is now posted on uh, YouTube at EPA Power Washing for your free viewing. You're going to go back and see what happened in 1995. And it's re uh, resulted in one of the lowest uh, rates of uh, detergents in the storm drain in the nation. PWNA and UAMCC reached to express our appreciation to the various municipalities for their willingness to work with the industry in developing their BMPs. The workshop is an initial step in, step in the process. Additional forums and discussion will take place. Once you make this, you're going to have to go back and have more uh, discussions with the in industry and probably modify a few things to fit your particular situation. At this time, you need to have any vendors that are in a room uh, get up and recognize themselves. So the contractors will know who the vendors are for various equipment. Reality of enforcement, what regulators are actually enforcing, what contractors need to know, what contractors are actually doing, and how contractors can be profitable. Who is an environmentalist? The biggest thing that had to do with the environmental attitudes is the economic revenue stream. Example of that is the corn off car horse industry in February 1995. <clears throat> budgeted half a million dollars to go after churches, Girl Scouts, and Boy Scouts on their uh, sidewalk and doing their car washes that discharge the water down into the storm drain. Summary of EPA's 
model ordinances, best management practices. The EPA's model ordinance, BMPs, you always want to pre-clean. Don't discharge sand, dirt, or debris into the sanitary sewer or storm drain. Clean up the debris and dispose of it properly, sweeping leaf board or a vacuum. Pre-clean oil and grease spots with an oil absorbent and dispose of it properly and collect oil and grease accumulations for proper disposal. In the Fort Worth ordinance, EPA's model ordinance, that can be put into the dumpster. You always, always want to filter your wastewater. Mainly is to remove the hydrocarbons and any oil sheen that's in it. Uh, a normal oil absorbent boom, what we do, will filter out all the free hydrocarbons. You want to have an oil sheen and you need some type of a screen, a mesh similar to a lady's pantyhose in order to uh, screen out the debris. So you always want to pre-clean, you always want to filter. Wastewater capture. The best way to do it is if you're on a permanent pad, a wash pad, or something like that. That's not always possible. Uh, typically made of concrete. Second choice is use a portable wash pad or portable wash pit in order to capture the wastewater. The third choice is to steal a, uh, seal the storm drains and capture the wash water with a vacuum system, sump, or some other technology. The type of technology system is responsibility to contract cleaners. So you have hundreds of contract cleaners and they've all developed ways to capture their wastewater that are applicable in their area. Wastewater capture, fourth choice. Evaporation is acceptable as long as evaporation occurs on property and a surface, uh, I'm sorry, and on a surface does not absorb contaminants. After the surface has dried, the contaminants need to be swept and vacuum up so that when it rains, the contamination is not washed away. If the surface is gravel or a poor, poor surface, the water table may be at such depth where the groundwater will not be polluted. Check with your local municipality. If you have uh, relatively shallow water like Fort Lauderdale in Miami Beach where the water tail in some parts of that town are only three or four feet deep. If you discharge any wastewater out on the lawn for bowel remediation, it's going to be in a neighbor's yard within an hour or two. Discharges to sanitary sewer is the preferred way to get rid of your wastewater for cosmetic cleaning. Some cities require permit, others do not. Contact your public works department for the city's requirement. The public works department may refer you to someplace else. Uh, one of the reasons the uh, ordinance on the EPA's website, their model ordinance has worked for good, is that they give the contract cleaner access to the sanitary sewer all over town and if there's no other discharge point they can discharge to the cleanout ports. We'll go into that better later. But the contractors will discharge it if it's reasonable, rational, and logical for them to do so. Discharge must be in compliance with local regulations and limits. Solids less than 250 milligrams per liter. Uh, petroleum's less than 250 milligrams per Per liter may require sampling and possible other measures. This will depend on your municipality. Basically, the city of Fort Worth has never been able to detect wastewater from cosmetic cleaning at their POTW. So basically, they're getting all that benefit at zero cost. Discharge the sanitary sewer at between 5 and 12 pH. Uh, if you normal cleaning, your wastewater will be within that uh, limits and below 150 degrees. So uh, just normal work for a contract cleaner, his wastewater will fall within those parameters. The, your best way is to discharge the sanitary sewer using the best available method that will re remove the largest amount of, of contaminants. Now if you're at a truck horse place, or not a truck horse, but a trucking facility, typically they'll have a sand trap. If you're at a restaurant, they'll probably have a, a grease trap. Uh, if you go by a corn up car wash pay and you're doing a service station, they're probably going to have a sand or grit trap or a clarifier, depending on which area of the country you're in. Basically what they want you to do is use the method of conveyance 
of your wastewater to the sanitary sewer that will remove the most contaminants. Now then, if you don't have any method to the sanitary sewer except the clean out stub, you can use that as, a, as your last resort. Never remove the sanitary sewer or storm drain covers in the middle of the road as these are city property and require authorization to open. The clean out port is on private property and you can have uh, authorized authorization from the owner to open up that the discharge into the sanitary sewer. Discharge the landscaping areas. Discharge the lamp must do the following. Obtain the property owner's permission. Ensure that the volume is small enough so that it soaks it into the ground without running off property. Limit your discharge to 1,000 gallon, 1,000 gallons per acre per month. If you put too much contaminated water on a property for a long period of time and you don't uh, filter and you don't pre-clean that the ground may require remediation when it's sold because there'll have to be an environmental assessment made at that time. On property wash water discharge can only occur on the property where the water is generated. Discharge to landscaping. Do not discharge repeatedly to the same landscape area because doing so will contaminate the soil and groundwater, damage plants, and cause other nuisance conditions. All property discharge can cause serious harm to the groundwater. Contract cleaners that are near a body of water, such as San Francisco, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, can contaminate the groundwater. As a general rule, the water table needs to be about 50 feet down depending on your type of soil as you're going to discharge to. For example, if you're building a fence in your area and it results in hitting groundwater, the water table is high and discharging will pollute the groundwater. It's important to check with your local municipality regarding these regulations. Ensure that the wash water is between a pH of 6 and 9 and you need to test it with a uh, pH test strip in order to discharge to landscape areas. Your last choice is recycle your wastewater. Most of the time that's going to be your most expensive. If the wash equipment being used recycle the water for reuse, the following may apply. All discharge locations are to be reported to the sanitary sewer in advance of wash water discharge. That's because the sanitary sewer district is going to want to know where you're discharging concentrated waste. Recycled wash water typically must be tested annually in a re and then the results reported to the sanitary sewer department as required. Recycling wash water con concentrates the contaminants and pollution. The POTW does not typically accept concentrated wastewater. If the wastewater is recycled long enough, the pollution becomes hazardous waste. There is a continuous buildup uh, the amount of total dissolved solids, heavy metals, and detergents. This then requires a contractor to have a waste hauler's permit. Discharges to the storm drain not recommended, but then there's some exceptions. Never discharge detergents, chemicals, or hot water to the storm drain. Washing with cold water, less than 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and no chemicals is considered no worse than a rain event and may discharge the same surfaces that do not have oil, grease, or other contamination. Remember, when you're washing with cold water and you're going to discharge the storm drain under these conditions, you don't want to use hot water because it's an emulsifier just like a detergent is. You basically want to be using cold water in surfaces that are not heavily contaminated. Water that is greater than 110 degrees Fahrenheit is considered hot water and considered to be the same as using soap. Hot water's emulsifiers are similar to using a detergent. Discharges must be free of foam and oil sheen. An oil, soak, an oil sock will remove foam and oil sheen. They call them oil shocks and oil absorbent booms. Discharge to environmental waste company is almost always acceptable, but it's also your, generally your most expensive options. 